Hello. Stomp. God bless you all. It's a new day. You know, one of the books, you know, of scriptures that really always um, caught my attention is the Apocrypha. <clears throat> because the Apocrypha has so many informations. It's crazy how many of these books have been taken off, you know, the Bible that, you know, we read today. It's just crazy, you know. So this isn't, I don't have the um, normal Apocrypha book, although I am planning to um, get it, in, you know, on physical form in, in their future. So it's an app that I downloaded, which allows me to not only have the canon books that we know of the Bible, <clears throat> of the Bible and also starting from the green, um, the green um, names, or actually a few books of the Apocrypha. We have the first book of Ezra, second Ezra, Tobith, Judith, you know, additional additions to Esther, Wisdom of Solomon, so Baruch. So there's many, there are many interesting books. For example, <coughs> the book of uh, Maccabees. Um, hold on a second. I'm just going to show you an example <coughs> of the information that you can find on uh, the Apocrypha. For example, <coughs> um, give me a second. For example, I'll just take a quick example about, you know, the book of Maccabees, the first Maccabees 3, chapter 3, verse 48 talks about something that's very realistic when you look you know how history has been changed and portrayed you know by the heathens basically um, you know changing uh, what what most people call whitewashing of course you know <clears throat> for example you know you look at the of course the verse 68 I mean chapter chapter 48. And it says something that's very deep and realistic. And it's totally understanding, understandable that, you know, these books have been taken off the Bible. And it's for multiple reasons. And it laid open the book of the law, wherein the heathens had sought to paint the likeness of their images. So that's just an example to show you, you know, what the type of information you will find. And, you know, a lot of these books of the Apocrypha, you know. And, <clears throat> you know, this is the book of Maccabees. I haven't read the full book at this moment, but it is clear that it talks about, you know, at a certain time while well, Jerusalem was about to be destroyed by the Romans and the Gentiles. You know, the heathens. And, you know. And clearly, you know, notice that the Israelites opened the book and, you know, they knew that what would happen, what was coming, that, you know, those, you know, what religious institutions that we call today the Christian church back then already, they were already planning, you know, the, you know, <laughs> the whitewashing of history, you know. So it is clear that when you watch, you know, when you, let's take the example of Egypt, for example. We know, of course, that, you know, the ancient Egyptians were the sons, of, the sons of Ham, you know, which are the modern day, you know, Hamites. We see that they are still inhabiting the land of Africa today. Um, and ever since we were young, I remember, you know, these, <laughs> these uh, old biblical movies of the 70s and 60s, you know, somehow always portraying, you know, the Egyptians. For If you take, for example, the stories of, you know, the story of Moses and the Hebrews that were slaves in Egypt, you know, for some reasons, there's something that has been shoved down, down our throats ever since we were young. We've been basically indoctrinated and thinking and that, you know, you know, the ancient Egyptians were, you know, uh, of uh, European descent. You know, which is something that's not, you know, that's never been true. Sadly, we never really looked 
we never really made our own research, you know. We never took our times to really, you know, go out there and make our own research. And when you look at the true history of the Egyptians, we can clearly see that they were, of course, Africans, what we call the sons of Ham. You see? It's just sad that, you know, most people don't take their times to go and make their own research. Something that you can easily find in Google Image. Just, you know, I, I mean, I'm on Google Images right now. I just type ancient Egypt and what, look what it shows me. Images of, you know, how the Egyptians really looked like. So it's clear that, you know, we've been taught things about ancient Egypt that that's an example of how history has been completely modified and whitewashed, of course. You know, so these 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 old Hollywood movies always showing the Egyptians as, you know, Caucasian people, which was always something that bothered me because I never really really understood, you know. So just look at you know the climate that's that's in Egypt. Do you only think that you know Caucasian people would be able to live in these this environment for centuries? Especially that technology didn't really exist. At, at least we we think that <clears throat> technology that we know today didn't exist at that time. Maybe they have. Maybe they had a different form of technology. Because we know that the ancient Egyptians were really advanced, and in many ways they were very they were a very advanced race of people. You know. So, I know that the ancient Egyptians really were advanced. When you look at their architecture, their technology, things that can't even be done these days, it's impressive how 
you know, the, the, those race of people were so advanced in architecture and, you know, civilizations and all that. It's just amazing. For example, you take your time to watch these images, for example. These images clearly portrays people of color. Well, you, you know, see the nose, the full lips and all. And it just shows you an example of how, you know, Egyptians really looked like, you know. It's crazy how, you know, how oblivious we are to those, to those truths, you know, to all those, those facts about how Egyptians looked like. Same thing goes for the ancient Hebrews of the Bible, of course. You know, Hollywood always being portraying the Hebrew slaves in Egypt as Caucasian people being slaves from you know, in Egypt, which is not true. It's just crazy how history has successfully found a way to brainwash the masses and making the masses think what they want. Well, in the, in the days we're living, it's just crazy that just uh, you know grabbing a phone going to google tapping stuff so you can get so much information you know so so you know you have the perfect example of you know modification of history and whitewashing of history this image right there is the image that of course the heathens wanted to how can i say wanted to change the paint and their lightness. I remember when I read the book of Maccabees earlier. Book of Maccabees um chapter forty eight. Remember when I read that? And laid open the book of the law wherein the heathen had sought to paint the lightness of their image. Okay, so that's an example. This just it's not it 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 not only applies to the biblical terms but also to the historical terms of, you know, all those ancient, you know, Hamite empires, you know. We know that the sons of Ham were the Egyptians and the Ethiopians, the Cushites as well. And we know that the sons of Shem were the, what we call the Hebrews in the Bible, you know. And all those people were of dark races. You see those images right there. That's an example of, you know, com completely painting, you know, and whitewashing history. While, you know, Egyptians and Hebrews who weren't, didn't look you know like that you know that's what you know what's that's what the history that they showed they've been showing us for almost 100 years now but good thing is that in these days we're living the truth is coming out now this is a more accurate depiction of the hebrew slaves in a very hot desert climate in north africa not in your not in northern europe North Africa. And one thing people need to know is that the so-called Middle East that we see today is also Northeastern Africa. We know that the Suez Canal and you know the whole European colonization of the land, they tried to divide you know the the, the land of Canaan with Egypt. Well, these lands were always the same lands, you know. So the, you know from Palestine all the way to, to southern um, to, to southern Syria all the way to um, Jordan, all the way to, uh, you know, Baghdad, all the way to Saudi Arabia. These regions are all Northeast Africa. These regions are part of Africa on the same tectonic plate and not part of Asia. But anyways, that's for, that's for another topic. Just wanted to make sure that to share my thoughts on, you know, how history has been so, has been changed by the heathens throughout history. And these ancient, you know, images are actually a proof of how history has been so has been changed multiple times and you know by the heathens you know making us think that everything was european which is not true those ancient images that you see now are the true images of the egyptians the nubians ancient egypt and you know kush this the title says it all so for example here's a depiction of the nubians clearly you know, people of color, of, you know, Africans, how people, most people call them. So, it is clear that history 
was whitewashed multiple times and it, to this day it's still many people are still in thinking that everything was you know European in ancient history which is not true it's just you know amazing to see how you know how, how things are how they <clears throat> they they're making us think in history that you know everybody was European um, history started in Africa that's why we call Africa the land you know the motherland of humanity and that's true <laughs> it's definitely true so don't be fooled it's, in, it's important to know to know history <clears throat> If you don't know, if you if you don't have a minimal understanding of you know how history has been changed by the heathens and their images, you know, you you won't be able to understand truly how this world you know operates. You know, either it's you know even religion also played a, a very big role on changing you know history multiple times, painting things and uh, images in their own likeness, you know. I don't really like to talk about that, but when you take the example of the image of Christ, or how the heathens during the Renaissance decided to to completely change, you know, the lightness of you know Christ, and if you talk about that, then what are they going to tell you? Their favorite argument that it doesn't matter. You know, the most important thing is that he came for us. He, you know, died on the cross, and you know. For us but my answer to you who you know to those who like to you know give the, this you know answer is do you want to serve the most high in spirit and in truth or in the way you want him you want to serve him see this is the problem with human mankind we we've always had this mentality of always wanting to worship images and change images and change stuff you know you know, personally, it doesn't matter. Knowing the truth is, you know, is you know, knowing the truth actually makes me see how wicked this world has been, how wicked those government institutions and all those, you know, those, you know, this global system works is to, you know, completely, you know, brainwash the masses and making you think that, hey, this is that. What what's important is that we give you, you know, so it's it's easy for the ones that are currently in power to completely change the images of history and their likeness how the book of maccabees portrayed that how they they said that ever back in those days the romans already started you know to you know change the, the images of history and their likeness you know but all i can say you know you know personally it doesn't matter how the most high how yeshua the christ looked like what matters is the truth. So, I had to pop this image out to clearly show you how the images have been changed throughout the centuries by the heathens, just like the Book of Maccabees said. And it's one of the reasons why this book has been taken off the Bible, like many other books of the Apocrypha that aren't in you know the Canon Bible we know today. It's for those reasons. The Christian Church doesn't want controversies. They don't want you know, people to know those that truth, you know. And like I said, it's not about color, it's not about race, it's about the truth. Whether people like it or not, I'm always about truth. But the most important thing to know is to serve God knowing the truth, not to serve God in the way you want to, to think how the truth is. That's why re religion is one of the biggest um, snares to humanity, because religion especially the Christian and, and the Christian religions has not only there they have been whitewashing history for centuries and presenting doctrines that are not in scriptures you know telling you that the laws are done away with, with which is not true because Christ of course uh, not you know Christ of course when he died what did he do he became, you know, he died, he sacrificed himself on the cross for not only the lost sheep of Israel to save his people. Because salvation came, was for the Israelites first. And then, what would happen? 
salvation would, would after go to the Gentiles. Because keep it in mind, back in the days of the, uh, the apostles, and especially Apostle Paul, many Israelites that were scattered across you know, the Roman Empire and many across uh, Africa weren't completely uh, rejected the Messiah, the Messiah, you know, the Messiah. Most of them, a lot of them rejected. That's why the apostles, most of the apostles also went to the Greeks and the Romans and you know, the, the people of you know, the Gentiles. That's why, you know, like the apostles said, salvation um, went to the Gentiles. One of the reasons why it's to pro it was to provoke jealousy within the heart of Israel. You know, not it's not that God doesn't love humanity, but keep in mind that the Most High God always had a group of people. Even if by grace, through grace, through Christ, we know that once you receive the, the you know, uh, you receive the Holy Spirit, you receive the Word of God. It doesn't matter who you are, where you came from. Once you accept Christ as your personal uh, Elohim and Savior, then guess what? You will receive salvation through grace. It doesn't matter if you're a descendant of Jacob or a Gentile. It does, there is no difference. Once you accept Christ, you, you can be grafted in through the body of the Mashiach, the Christ. Jesus, you know. But you cannot be grafted in in the body of you know the tribes of Israel that's something you cannot be grafted into because in the flesh you are not a descendant of Jacob you are a descendant of a de descendant of the Romans and the Greeks and the sons of Japheth basically so getting back to the, the original topic of the video um, the ancient Egyptians of course were the sons of Ham because Ham Noah had three sons <clears throat> Ham, Shem and Japheth according to history the Kushites and the Kushites, the Ethiopians and the Egyptians, and also the Canaanites were the sons of Ham. They were all of you know the Ham lineage, and they all looked like that, dark brown people. Well, that's what history was not going to tell you. But now I'm here to show you the truth, show you what you know history books and even you know religion is not going to tell you. But the truth is, at the end of the day, the truth will set you free. It will make you free. You will, as you know the truth. It will compel you to get out of these these false you know false teachers and these religious institutions that will not give you salvation. Salvation is through Christ, through the Father, through the Mashiach, the Messiah. It's not through religious institutions and and doctrines that of men. So, <clears throat> like I said before, knowing the true history, knowing the true, I mean knowing the true history, is in isn't um, the goal isn't to to trigger people or to make people think that it's only about color or race? It's only about the truth. Because when you Christians say that we worship the Most High in spirit and in truth, then you can't be worshiping the Most High in in spirit and 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 in half truth or in hidden truth. You know. So. It's important to know that truth, and I firmly believe once again that the Holy Spirit in these last days will reveal many things. Not only <clears throat> the awakening that's happening among amongst the descendants of Jacob around the world, but also among among the Gentiles that will truly serve the Most High God and get away from those from those religious in institutions that don't want to serve God. You know, I firmly believe that many Gentiles will also know that truth, and through the Holy Spirit will ultimately accept that truth. And what's going to happen by that? They're going to cling to that truth and also serve the Most High God to the best of their abilities through the Holy Spirit, which will reinforce them. Because you, in this weak flesh, we cannot serve the Most High to the fullest because this flesh is weak. We all know that. This, that's why in the Holy Spirit is there to give us that extra push, you know, in order for us to really serve Him because times will get hard and harder. No, as the truth is coming out, many people will be triggered and many people will be angry. But guess what? Those people that are angry by the truth and are using ex excuses like I, we are making this about race and color, that, that has nothing to do. Like I said, like I always repeat, it's only about knowing the truth. Because the truth is giving you wisdom. The truth is giving you knowledge. You can't live in a world where you've been lied to your whole life and loving that lie. For those of you who want to stay, who, who wants to deny the truth, and who want to, um, you know, keep on loving and living in, in the matrix, you know, 
of what you know the heathens made us believe then that's your problem i'm here to simply teach the truth and also the word of god it's important and i firmly believe that the holy spirit will reveal many of you the truth the word of god is life not religion not not sunday not, not sunday morning uh, praise in church but the truth is the word of god so many religious institutions are saying that the laws are done are done with but hey as i was saying before christ abolished these sacrificial laws meaning that today especially as you know the descendants of jacob we don't have to if we if we want to come back to the truth and start worshiping God as He how He wants us to worship Him, not in a religious way but in the spirit in the truth way, then we can still worship the Most High God and follow the Ten Commandments, which is the law. You know, that's the law. It's true that the Mosaic Law was there are many aspects of the Mosaic Law that has been abolished by Christ, and I'm not talking about that Christ. Okay, that's what the heathens made you believe. I'm talking about the most accurate presentation of Christ, which is those images. But again, like I said, this is always about truth, not about, you know, what most of you will think. Just imagine if you saw somebody taking your picture and changing it to another image. And those people took your picture and showed them to the world and showed that that's how you look. Well, that's not true. Well, you know how you looked. You know, so it is. It is what it is. We know that it was prophesied that, you know, every image is everything would be what would be whitewashed and changed. We know that already. But what should we do, knowing the truth? The truth, of course, not what you know. You know, the pagans, uh, you know, has been, you know, showing you for centuries. By the way, which Caesar Borgia was the original image where of where the, the European Christ came from. You know, what matters is, is not what, you know, the heathens have been teaching us for centuries. But what matters is, is the truth. That's what matters <clears throat> the most. We don't need, we don't have to serve Christ in the way we feel comfortable of how we would look like. We simply serve Christ because he died on the cross for everybody. Especially, he not only died on the cross for the lost sheep of Israel, but also for the Gentiles who will accept the truth through the Holy Spirit. For the Gentiles who were who were lost, and now today through that through that grace you can receive salvation. Doesn't matter who you are. So I think I'm gonna end it there. It's important for us to know the truth. You can't serve God, you know, with an image that makes you comfortable. You gotta serve God because of what what He did and the fact that God showed you the truth. I'm not worshiping God because I know He was He looked like me. I'm not going to worship the Christ more all of a sudden because, hey, I know the truth and I know he looked like me. I know he was a dark-skinned man like me. I'm not going to feel more comfortable because of that. Because I tell you what, our people, we've never questioned. We've been, for centuries, we've been taught that, you know, the Israelites and the Christ was all Caucasian or Europeans. We've never had an issue with that. And how come now, all of a sudden, it becomes an issue? Talking about the truth shouldn't be something that, you know... It's not a doctrine or not, or either. It's simply teaching the truth. Because like most Christians say, we worship God in spirit and in truth. You can't, like I said before, you can't worship the most high in spirit and, and the way how it makes you feel comfortable. That's why worshiping the most high in images is something that, it's paganistic. And this the same way how the children of Israel, my, my forefathers turned away from the most high God. And started worshiping images and, and false gods. And it's the same thing for the Europeans. The sons of Japheth did the same. They were worshiping false gods and images. And th that's exactly what they did with the images of you know, the, the, the true biblical Israelites and also the Christ. And these pagans will be judged for that. And their times, of course, when in the time of the, uh, of the important time, they will be judged if they don't repent. So I'm encouraging everybody, either you're, you're an awakened Israelite, you know who you are, or... You're a Gentile who believes in, in Christ and who knows in that truth and accepts that truth. Not to, not the truth that makes you comfortable, but the truth that that plug unplugs you out of the matrix. Uh, coming to that truth should become a very powerful knowledge. 
that is prophecy fulfilling of course like i said many of you gentiles god will bless you and he will show you that truth and you will serve the most high not because of the fact that knowing that the most high looks like you know a brown person it doesn't matter what matters is knowing the truth serve the most high that's why many will be surprised and many will be shocked when the messiah returns because what they will see will me what they will see it will not be what you know the paganistic religious institutions has been shoving down our throats for centuries it is not what they will see and that's why scriptures makes it clear that people will hide under mountains people will hide and ask the mountains to follow them because what they will see will super surprise them and i'm saying with power and glory what they will see the christ that they will see is not going to be the caesar the caesar borgia you know image of the european christ it's going to be a christ with power with power and with might and the image that he had the true image of christ with power and might as the judge as the ruler so once more uh, uh this time i'm really gonna end it there because <laughs> i said i was gonna end it but i kept on bringing um, an extra because i want to make sure that you people understand i want to make sure that what i'm telling you is nor a doctrine it's not a religion it's simply the truth the scriptural truth same way how, how i talk about the scriptural rapture the scriptural rapture which is the gathering of the 12 tribes and the gentiles who will accept you know the truth it's not going to be no secret rapture of the Christian church, so-called. That's what well, the Hollywood Christian religion has been shoving down our throats for multiple years and for, even for centuries. But anyways, every time I make videos, I've, I always want to make sure that the people who will listen know that I'm not about any doctrines or not about any ideologies. I'm only about the truth and about, you know, you know, the scriptures, the word of God, not religion. Because I, I don't worship men. I don't worship, you know, mankind doctrines. I worship the laws of Christ. I, I, I follow the laws of Christ and the Ten Commandments. And knowing who I am, that I am the son of Abraham and Jacob, I'm a believer in Christ. And I also follow, you know, the laws of Christ, the Ten Commandments. And also I honor the feast days, you know. So all people that, you know, believe in Christ, of course, we know that you receive salvation through grace. So it's important for us to know that you know not to be not to be fooled by what religion shows us but to serve the most high god through the word and to, through his laws so shalom everybody god bless and uh maybe next time i'll be able to make another video we'll see but for now stay strong and, and keep faith family Either, either to the you know my, to my Hebrew family out there, or also my brothers and sisters in Christ, all of you Gentiles who serve God and spirit and in truth. God bless you all. And shalom.